Now we've come to the part in the doable duffel pattern where it's time to work with zippers. Yay! This makes me excited because I have heard from so many people that have made this pattern that these were the very first zippers that they ever sewed into any project ever. Which just goes to show that if you have never sewn a zipper before either, you're in good hands and I promise you can do it. If you can sew a straight line, or really two straight lines, that's all it takes to insert a zipper. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you an overview of the steps that involve every part of the zippers. So by the end of this video and this assignment, you should have attached your zipper to both your zipper sides as well as your interior pocket. And then I'll be showing you a second different type of zipper insertion technique because if you're learning, why not learn more? And I'll show you how to take the lining fabric and the exterior part of your front pocket, bind it, and also attach a zipper. So let me know in the comments if these are your very first zippers that you're ever sewing, because I'd love to cheer you on and hear how the experience went for you. In this first section, we're going to be creating a zipper strip. And a zipper strip is simply the combination of our two zipper sides plus one of our 30 inch double slide handbag zippers. We're going to put them together, sew them all together, and now this is going to form the very top part of the bag where we're going to have the big wide zipper that opens up across the top and cascades down the two sides of the bags. So that's what a zipper strip is. And how do we create it? Well, it's actually really simple. So first things first, we're gonna start with one zipper side and one of our two 30 inch double slide handbag zippers. I'm going to slide the two zipper poles off to one side, but notice I'm not going to slide them right off the end. And um, I'm working with zippers by the yard. So I've just cut some zippers by the yard down to approximately 30 inches, but you probably have a pre-made zipper that's 30 inches long. Both are fine. From here, I'm just going to lay one of my zipper sides on top of the, um, what do we call this again? The tape <laughs> on the zipper. And I want to make sure that my binding is fully on top of the zipper tape. So I don't want to have half of my binding hanging off of the zipper tape. So that means that my binding's gotta be fairly close to the teeth. I've got to make sure that they're fairly close together. And all I'm gonna do, I'm not even gonna pin or glue or tape or do anything. I'm literally just gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew two lines of stitches. I'm going to sew one line of stitching one eighth of an inch away from this top part of my zipper strip on the binding fabric. And then I'm going to sew another line of stitching one eighth of, of, an, oh, one eighth of an inch away from this fold along the bottom. And those two lines of stitching are going to attach my zipper side to my zipper. And in this scenario, I would probably pick a thread color that matches, the top thread matches my binding fabric and the bobbin thread matches my zipper tape because you're going to see these stitches, they're gonna show up for all and the rest of time. So I would bother to change out my thread color for this step. Once you've got the zipper sewn to half of your zipper strip, you need to do the exact same thing with the other side. So I'm simply gonna take my other half of my zipper strip, I'm gonna lay it down on top of the zipper, and I'm trying to sort of line these two up so that the edges are sort of matching on both sides, but it's okay if they don't specifically perfectly match because we're going to trim this in the next step to make it exactly the shape and size that we want. So I am truly just going to take this to my sewing machine just like I did before and stitch down two lines of stitches. One, one line is gonna be an eighth of an inch away from this top edge of the binding and one is going to be an eighth of an inch away from the fold of this binding. And that is going to attach them all together. That wasn't very hard. All I had to do was just add two extra lines of stitching. And the best part about using matching thread color is that even if my stitches are not perfect, it's not very visible. And that is the whole point. So on the front, you can't really see the stitches. And on the back, you definitely can't see those stitches. And that was the goal. I'm not trying to draw attention to my stitching. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the whole point of this bag. So I like to pick things that match. Now. This is very close to being a completed zipper strip, but it's too big. And the reason that I made this too big is that sometimes when people sew their zippers in, they sew, they sew them wider or closer. So you'll need to now refer to your pattern and cut this down to the correct dimensions. And so it helps both with the width because of the different types of zippers. And it also helps with the length in case you didn't quite arrange those two ends exactly the same. Now you can chop them off. 
And here is my top tip of the week. I'm gonna repeat this later on in this same video, but my top tip is that before you go and cut this all down, you need to move your zipper pulls into the middle of your chunk, okay? Because imagine you had your zippers over here and then you chopped this down to size. That would be very sad to have chopped off your zipper pulls. So top tip, move your zipper pulls into the middle, get out your cutting mat and then cut this down. When it comes to cutting, you have a couple of options. You can definitely use a rotary cutter because if you have picked a zipper that has nylon teeth, a rotary cutter will definitely cut through these. I don't use my newest, freshest blade. I use an old one that I use for things like paper and other types of crafts, but I will use an old rotary blade to cut this down. Or alternatively, you could use craft scissors. Now I've got my freshly trimmed up, looking hot, looking good, looking square zipper strip. But since I just cut all of the edges of this, I'm going to recommend that you and I both stay stitch around the exterior one eighth of an inch away. And I would probably, when it came to the ends of these zippers, I would stitch back and forth across them several times. Like maybe I might go five or six or time, five or six times because what I really don't want is to accidentally later in this bag making process, accidentally zip my zipper, pull it right off the end. So I'm going to go over this spot multiple, multiple times to make sure I don't accidentally unzip my zipper. I did not feel like changing my thread color to match the <laughs> exterior fabric or the lining fabric. And that's fine because these stitches are gonna be covered up later on. Plus you can really see that I did stay stitch around the exterior and I went over many, many times over these end little bits to make sure I didn't lose my zipper pulls. But now this is called the zipper strip. Cute, right? And the last thing to do is to label it so we don't get confused. So you know I've got my label as per always and I'm going to clip that to this piece so I don't get confused going forward. And that's it for creating a zipper strip. Wasn't too hard, right? Now comes the part where we do a little bit of zipper magic. So in the next few steps, we're going to be attaching zippers to two more parts of the bag because the front pocket, which is kind of narrow and small, needs a zipper. And also the interior pocket, which is quite a bit wider, also needs a zipper. But you might be looking at the supplies that you have left and thinking, well, if I need two zippers, but I only have one, how is that going to work? And the simple answer is we're going to take this double slide handbag zipper. Like the important part is that it's got two slides on it, two zipper pulls. And we're gonna turn this into two separate zippers. One of which is going to be smaller and will correspond to the width of the front pocket. One of the zippers will be longer and will correspond to the width of the interior pocket. So what you need to do is follow the pattern instructions and mark two lines across the zipper. So the pattern tells you where to mark these lines. I tried to do it using a pen and it was completely invisible. So instead I just put two pins in there to show you what I mean. So you should have two lines that are about a half inch apart and you're going to take this to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch down these lines. And the reason you're doing that is you are then securing the zippers so you don't accidentally zip the zippers off either end. Before you do that, it's really important that you have one zipper pull in the shorter area of the zipper and one zipper pull in the longer area. If both of your zipper pulls were way off to one side and you stitched these, you'd be really sad because then you'd realize, oh, this short zipper doesn't have a zipper pull. <laughs> so you wanna make sure that you've got your zipper pulls pulls apart before you do the stitching. So let me head to my sewing machine. I'll make these two lines of stitching and then I'll show you what we do after that. So now what I'm gonna do is take my craft scissors. You could also do this with a rotary cutter and I'm just going to cut between those two lines and now I'm going to have two totally separate zippers. So we took one zipper and turned it into two. And of course this smaller zipper is going to correspond to my front pocket, which we're going to deal with in just a minute. Um, but in the next section, we're going to attach this longer zipper to the interior pocket pieces. I'm not even gonna show you this because it's exactly, exactly the same as what we did with our uh, zipper sides. So you'll see that you've got two pieces here of your interior pocket pieces. So I'm going to put the bindings so that they're facing each other and I'm going to lay my zipper down. I'm going to put my interior pocket piece on top with the, I mean, this doesn't really have an exterior interior because it's exactly the same fabric on both sides. Um, but I'm going to lay that on top, take it to my sewing machine, sew two lines of stitches, and then I'm gonna do that with exactly the same, 
with the top piece. And then I'm going to have one chunk that looks a lot like the zipper sides did. Now it's time to assemble our front pocket unit, which includes multiple steps and different pieces, but we'll just take it slow and go one step at a time. The very first step is to cut your front pocket piece into two pieces. So follow the directions in the pattern and you'll cut that into two pieces. You're going to take your last and remaining only sad little zipper and you're gonna put it on the table with the teeth facing up with the zipper closed and the pull at the left hand side. And quick note before we proceed, this is different than what we did before. So if you were looking at this and thinking, I know how to do zippers, I'll just do exactly what we did in the last step. Don't do that because you're not gonna have the results you want. First of all, there's no binding on these two pieces, so that should be a clue. But um, we're gonna learn a whole new technique because learning is what? Fundamental. Okay, so you're gonna start with a smaller piece that you just cut and you're going to lay it so that the lining side is facing up and then you're going to align this cut edge, this edge that you just, just cut and put it along the top of the zipper tape. And if anything, I like to leave a tiny bit of a gap, maybe about an eighth of an inch, and then I'm going to clip it in place. Take this to my sewing machine, and then I'm going to sew a line of stitches one quarter inch away from this cut edge of the lining fabric. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Oh yeah, good job, Claire Bear. You can see that I have stitched one quarter inch away, thanks to the fact that I was too lazy to change my top thread. You can see that I stitched one quarter inch away from this cut edge of my quilted fabric. Now I'm gonna just quickly lay this down on the table with the zipper tape facing up, and I'm going to look and see if I can see any of that quilted panel peeking out when I just lay it on the table. And if I can, I'm gonna use some scissors and trim it away, because here's why. In the next step, I'm gonna flip it back over so the zipper's on the bottom and the quilted panel's on the top, and I'm going to finger press this part up, all right? And I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and with the zipper flat against the bed of my mach machine, I'm going to stitch one quarter inch away from this fold, and I'm gonna match my top thread so it matches my exterior fabric and use a bobbin thread that matches the zipper tape of my zipper. And the goal here is to encase this whole thing. So you've got to kind of push them away from each other, make sure that the zipper is on the bottom and just stitch one quarter inch away from this line. And that should catch all of this raw stuff on the inside when you push it over and stitch it down. Bye Claire, we'll see you later. Now I've got the zipper attached to half of my front pocket piece and I'm gonna basically repeat the exact same thing with the other half of it. So uh, I'm going to lay my zipper tape on my table. I'm going to take the cut, this time the um, zipper is at the right hand side and I'm going to align the cut edge of my front pocket piece, clip it to the zipper, take this to my sewing machine. So, oh, Claire's back. So a quarter of an inch away, flip it over and then top stitch it. And I'll show you what that looks like. I've just finished making this quarter inch stitch away. And when I lay the zipper face up, I don't see any bits of fabric. So that's fine. I'm just gonna proceed like this. And I'm gonna do exactly what I did last time, which is shove that out of the way. I'm going to finger press this up and away from the this one's harder to do, it's a bit floppier. I'm gonna finger press that up and away. And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine, put it so that the zipper tape is on the bed of my machine and now top stitch a quarter inch away. Pull that back into the picture. Make sure that that zipper tape is flat against the bed of my machine. And now I'm going to stitch a quarter inch away. You can see that that zipper tape wants to twist. Okay, so that's what that looks like. Now I've got a top stitch on both the top and back and you can see that the zipper tape got caught there as well. So it has nicely enclosed all of those cut bits. It's not as cute on the back as it is on the front, <laughs> that's okay people are only gonna see the front so I'm happy I'm happy with that so now my pieces are sewed together the zipper is attached to my quilted pieces it zips it works and as you probably notice look my sides are not perfectly aligned 
but once again, I've made this piece oversized so that you can now trim it to the exact shape and size that you need. So follow the instructions in the pattern to cut this down. And if you do make cuts, you're going to wanna cut the sides and also the bottom, but not this top edge. Leave this top edge and then just trim into the sides and trim up from the bottom in order to make this the correct size. Once you've got that done, you'll definitely wanna sew across the zipper teeth in order to make sure that you are securing those zipper ends and you don't accidentally zip off your zipper pull. So now I've got it trimmed a little bit and I should have mentioned that it's a great idea to stay stitch around the outside anywhere that you did do some trimming. And once again, I was too lazy to change my thread color so you can see where I had to trim on the sides. And I definitely stitched over the zipper ends to make sure that they were secure. But we're not quite done with this yet. It's not fully, it's fully realized self. It's not quite a front pocket piece. For that, it needs lining fabric and binding on the top. So the next step is to lay this piece down where the lining side is facing up and the zipper teeth are touching the work table that you're working on. And then you're going to take your interior pocket lining fabric, which we previously interfaced, and lay that on top, just sort of matching up all the sides. And then you're gonna take this piece of binding, which is the interior, nope, <laughs> which is the front pocket piece binding, and you're going to lay it on the lining side where the cut edge of your, the raw edge of your binding is aligned along the top. Clip this in place, stitch one quarter inch away from this, press it towards the front and then top stitch it down after you glue baste or if that is what you're doing or if not. So I'm gonna do that and come back and show you what that looks like. Now I've got binding on the front, but the problem is that the lining and the exterior are a bit floppy and they're, I want them to be sort of as one. So I'm just gonna stay stitch around the exterior. I usually start from the top on each side and work my way down and then from there I stitch across. And then uh, if needed, I would trim off any excess. Let's say you happen to, I don't know, have a little bit extra of your lining fabric hanging over the edge, I would just trim that off. And then I'll also clip off these edges. So I'm just gonna quickly add these stitches. They're just stay stitches. I want everybody to be friends. There's one side. And I'll go down the other side. Feels like that zipper is gonna be in my way. And I'm just making sure that the fabric is aligned. And I'll just stitch across the bottom to make sure that that edge is secured as well. This machine had a service not very long ago, but it does not sound very happy. Okay, so there is my little sandwich <laughs> bag. They're all put together. So this is a front pocket in which you can actually open it up, put things inside, and then also we're gonna stitch it to the front of the bag so it's going to act as a slip pocket as well, which is why we put a binding on the top. I'm just gonna clip off these little edges because I don't need them. And then, that's it for our front pocket unit. The last thing you can do is you can get out your label and label this as the front pocket unit. And that's it. That's all there was to this section of the doable duffel pattern. In this section, you created a zipper strip. Woohoo! So you inserted one zipper, one very long one there. You also attached the zipper to the interior pocket pieces and made one big chunk, which if you chose a fun fabric like I did, looks really cute. And then you also used a totally different zipper insertion method and created a front pocket unit. Isn't that fun? So you got to insert three different zippers using two different techniques. And I really do want you to let me know in the comments if this worked really well for you, if it was fun, if it was your first zippers, if you were traumatized in the beginning, but you did okay. And if you really like this video format of learning tips and tricks, you might want to check out my online course called Duffel Master. In that course, it is where I share every single tip and trick and secret and every bit of information I have on getting more accurate results and more professional looking results. So if that is something that interests you, I'll put a link in the description below and you can learn more about that online course and join the hundreds and hundreds of students who have already taken it and who rave about it. Until then, I'm wishing you happy zipper insertion and I'll see you in the next video.